That night I was writing in my journal again, dear God, I'm in school, life is good. And then I felt like I got really taken over by a feeling. Some people call it the Holy Spirit. I was just like crying and I just wrote that I wanted to devote my life to God. And I, I meant it very sincerely. I wrote, dear God, I have decided to give my life to you. And I wrote, give my life in all caps. And whatever that entails, I want to be guided by you, by the light. This is my pledge. I will work hard to follow this path and bring it to fruition. Please help me do this. Please help me bring light to other people. Thank you. Amen. So the next morning I woke up and I was like, I don't know what that was. Kind of weird, but I started having dreams of things that were going to happen to me. Like I had a dream about a car accident before it happened. I had a dream about carbon monoxide poisoning before it happened. Or I'd have dreams like my friends would come and tell me something and then it turned out to be true. And those have continued to this day, but I would just go do things and be like, wait, I dreamt this. And that was nothing that had ever happened to me before. Thank you so much for joining me on another episode of Let Thy Single Eye Be Still. My name is Travis Cosentino, and with me today is Rebecca Castle. Now, Rebecca Castle is known as a master Reiki healer an angel interpreter, and a writer. What she experienced is what's called an STE, a spiritual transformative event. This is her story. Rebecca, thank you so much for joining me on this uh, episode. Uh, I wanted to ask you, um, so what you had was called an STE, which is a spiritual transformative event. Yes. And... I think a lot of people can probably relate with that in some way, but yours is very unique. <laughs> and so I'm very excited to hear about that, but I want to kind of step back a little bit. And uh, what was your life like just before this whole thing happened? That's an awesome question. I So right before it happened, I had a... A couple years, I had been on a healing journey. So I'd had a trauma at 13 that I was trying to heal from. And I'd gone to therapy and therapy was like, you're fine. After a few years, I, they said I was fine because I was functioning. But I knew there was still something wrong. Like it felt like something was on top of my heart. And so at age 23, I just said, I want to heal all the way. I want to feel what's under my heart. And I didn't realize it would end up in this big spiritual experience. But um, for the two years before, two or three years before my experience happened, I was, you know, learning you know, once I set that intention that I wanted to heal all the way, I met like people that helped me. It was like I set that intention and then I met a Reiki teacher. I didn't believe in Reiki, but I started studying it because every time I went, it helped me. I'd be like, this isn't real, but I feel better. <laughs> and then I, st I met a yoga teacher and she sat me down and talked to me about the purpose of yoga before I even started studying with her. And then I started doing like Ashtanga five days a week because I'd been like, even though I'd been like kind of dismissed from therapy, I still had trouble sleeping. I still had some th these nightmares that were cured during my STE. So yeah, so that was a couple years leading up to it. I was on a healing journey that was like pretty you know, pretty sincere. I still had a regular life the whole time. I always had a job. <laughs> I was in grad school. It was like living my life, but on the inside, I was doing these different things. So one of the things that you had mentioned on um, your website was that you weren't very much of a spiritual person prior to all of this. So mm. um, can you talk a little bit about that? Like, why yeah. is that? Well, you know, honestly, I wasn't spiritual I say because when I had these things happen I was just completely shocked I didn't understand what was happening to me and I was also very skeptical my dad was an MD PhD so he was a physician with a PhD in biochemistry and we were raised like anything that's outside of this world and doesn't make sense is like ridiculous <laughs> and anyone who thinks like the things that I have been is like crazy <laughs> but you know I, I was also I wasn't spiritual but I was raised like I have an interfaith Jewish and Christian background so I don't know if that made a difference. I, yeah, but I was definitely not like thinking that you could see a light and feel angels or anything, anything like that at all. So mm. it's interesting to me because you, you kind of said that you started to uh, put your intentions out on what you wanted, mm -hmm. which to me is, is somebody who has some sort of connection with manifesting things in their lives, which to me feels like more of a, more of a sort of spiritual ability rather than mm -hmm. just thinking on a, a logical plan on how things work. Yeah. So it seems to me like maybe you were a little more naturally into it than you actually thought. You know, that's a really good point. 
I wouldn't have called myself spiritual, but I think, um, yeah, I think I was setting these intentions. And honestly, uh, my stepdad, so I had a Jewish dad and a Christian mom, and then my mom and dad divorced and my mom remarried an indigenous man who was, uh, said to be a medicine man in his tribe. And I always thought I was just really messed up. But like, right when he met me, he was like, you have the spiritual light. And I was like, Doesn't, am I just like messed up though? Like, I think that's what, what my story is. And he was like, no, no, no. And so he was a major, like, he was like, yes, yeah, you're spiritual. And once I had all my spiritual experiences happen, he had a lot of dreams about me, but he was very modest. He would never t- say that he was a medicine man. In Louisiana, they call it trateur, um, or elikchi. Um, but he, he had all these dreams and he had a connection and he did healings that he never talked about. He was so modest, but so anyway, it's interesting. The Western world, I felt like I was just super messed up. But once I met my stepdad, he was like, come, let me tell you some things. So yeah, that's actually super cool. I wish I had somebody like that in my life. I did not realize how unique it was until like this past year when I've been talking about it, it was a real big blessing and a real validation for me, but I still had a hard time accepting my experiences, but he taught me a lot. So I'm very grateful. That's awesome. So how did you get into doing Reiki? Just like I went to a book club for my college and one of the people there was like, I do Reiki. And I was like, you're crazy. What are you talking about? But I could just see she was like glowing so much. And I was just drawn to like her. And yeah, I know I was so judgmental. And now I know I'm sharing my story. If people are judging me, it's I understand because I was I was there. But I was really trying to heal and I could really feel the difference. I mean, being traumatized puts you in a place of like all of the stuff I did was from a very sincere, like, I want to feel better. I want to heal. I want to live like a true life. Like I was pretty, pretty sad and depressed. So yeah, Reiki was awesome. I I still do it today. I I do it for people. Did you do any of the uh, traditional things that people often do when they try to deal with something like that with like drugs or alcohol? I mean... Yeah, a little bit. I uh, I didn't do a lot of drugs or alcohol. I'm from New Orleans, so I, I maybe I did more alcohol than most people, but it was just kind of a balanced, uh, you know, it wasn't too crazy. Um, mm-hmm. Hold on. Well, that's good. I mean, yeah. it sounds like you made a plan at a very young age that you really wanted to to heal this, and you did it in all of the more positive ways rather than going down the darkness of drugs and alcohol so yeah. that's awesome thanks yeah, thank you which which makes me think that you were really in the best position spiritually to hear from god because whenever you drink alcohol or do drugs you separate yourself from god i feel that i mean i still sometimes will drink wine from time to time but i never do it before i do readings or healings i can tell a difference in my energy it is it's a real you're right about that i definitely feel that so Absolutely. So tell me, let's, let's go into the story. So, okay. so what happened? Okay. Here's what happened. So <laughs> on my healing journey, I had started writing my journal, dear God, just like I was going on this healing journey. And in my journal, I would just like, dear God, I'm in school, dear God, I'm in living. So I had gotten, um, so from 23 to 25, I did a lot of healing and then I'd moved up to New York for graduate school, um, at teacher's college at Columbia university. And that was at this time I was writing in my journal, right before this night when my STE started, I'd had like a little flu or an illness. I'd also been reading The Tunnel in the Light by Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. And I think like the combination of those things really, I think it made a difference. I'm not sure. Cause that night I was writing in my journal again, dear God, I'm in school, life is good. And then I felt like I got really taken over by a feeling. Some people call it the Holy Spirit. I was just like crying. And I just wrote that I wanted to devote my life to God. And I, I meant it very sincerely. I wrote, dear God, I have decided to give my life to you. And I wrote, give my life in all caps and whatever that entails. I want to be guided by you, by the light. This is my pledge. I will work hard to follow this path and bring it to fruition. Please help me do this. Please help me bring light to other people. Thank you. Amen. And then I just kept writing in my journal. I didn't think I was, I meant that and I meant it sincerely, but I didn't think anything would come from that. Um, but when I went to bed that night, I saw a light come over my bed. It went from one end of the room to right over me. And it wasn't just like a light you turn on in the room. It was like a sentient light. Like it was, it loved me. It could see into my heart all the way. Like I, even though I'd been doing so much healing, I could tell I was still hiding so much of myself. And I was really scared for this light to see me. It wasn't, it was very loving, but I was like scared to be seen. 
And I said over and over again, go away, go away. I'm scared, go away. I just like tensed up. And I was like, it just was so real. And then the, then I started to feel tingling go through my head and it spread through my head very peacefully. It was like loving and peaceful yeah. and it kept spreading. And I thought it was a headache. As I said, I wasn't spiritual. I looked, I had a boyfriend at the time. I looked at him. I was like, what's this headache? Like, is he having this? He was asleep. And, and then I relaxed into that feeling and I felt a voice come into my head and it said very lovingly, you don't have to be afraid, but if you are, you can wear a hat. And it put a graduation hat into my mind's eye. And I was like, well, I don't think that's a cute hat. And I put some other ideas into the voice, like, like just did not know what was happening. And um, then the voice stopped, but then the experience kept going. It started that night and it kept going for the next two years. Um, I did, have been, I've learned to be a much better listener, but that was the first night of anything really, cre really spiritual happening to me. Uh, I didn't know what to do. So the next morning I woke up and I was like, I don't know what that was, kind of weird, but I, uh, as I was going to school, everyone was glowing. They just had a beautiful, beautiful light coming out of them. Like I felt, I was literally in love with everyone. I passed like, how did I never notice? Everyone is a beautiful angel. They had so much light. It was, I literally was walking down this like in awe of every human. Um, and I still see that light in people, but it's never been as strong as that. That, that those couple of days right after it was really profound. Um, that exact week, right then, I started having psychic dreams. And you know, my mom had been a psychologist, so I'd been raised like, every dream you have is about you, and they're just like your mental chatter. But then I was starting to have dreams that were telling me things I needed to do, like mend a relationship with an ex-boyfriend. <laughs> you know, I joke my experience was mostly just helping my dating life. <laughs> uh, but I, I'm kidding. It was very profound, but it's also in a, my very basic 20-something life, which I think is really relatable for people. I needed to mend a relationship with someone. I started having dreams of things that were going to happen to me. Like I had a dream about a car accident before it happened. I had a dream about carbon monoxide poisoning before it happened. Or I'd have dreams like my friends would come and tell me something and then it turned out to be true. And those have continued to this day, but I would just go do things and be like, wait, I dreamt this. And that was nothing that had ever happened to me before. Um, I remember getting an apartment and I had a dream that I got the apartment right before that week. And I told the landlord, the landlord called, he said, you got the apartment. I was like, I had a dream I got the apartment. He's like, you're not supposed to tell people that. I was like, okay, am I, am I not supposed to tell people that? It's kind of learning. You know, all very, <laughs> so I mean, I have learned it really years. Like I don't always tell, but they're also very like, relatable it's nothing it's not about the world the dreams i have they're just they've just been about my life and about my friends so um i also started feeling angels around me so that happened for this whole two years i really felt surrounded by light and angels but there were some times where it was really profound like i was going to sign up to study abroad and as soon as i picked up the pen i felt two really tall angels on either shoulder basically just telling me not to do that um, it's like God really does take an interest in our own personal lives and they did not want me to do that. It's interesting that they were tall because I've heard from other people feeling angels were really tall, very loving. And they said it w without words, but I listened and I put the pen down and I didn't do the study abroad program. I've seen angels. I've heard angels song after that, just different small things, not well, I, I also do readings now, so I have a system to connect with them and um, tell people what I hear their angels say. I'm still a human filter, so I always say trust your own heart first. But um, I also started feeling how connected we all are. It was a little bit like a life review um, in real time. So I had hurt my sister by accident. I didn't mean to, but I... Uh, uh, I had like said some, I'd done something hurtful and I felt in that moment how much it really hurt her in, and I felt it really in my heart, in my soul. And it was like, I realized like I really didn't want to hurt people like that anymore. And I couldn't believe that I could hurt people like that. It was, um, it was a really big shock that I didn't know. Like I'd been going through my life, not realizing I could, I could affect people really. I also started feeling how much it is to be like important it is to be kind to people like kind to everyone like and I mean it in my heart like if I feel like I was angry when I was dealing with someone like I try not to ever be I've been there you know it takes a lot to be at the peaceful place I was at with like the angels but I have to meditate and pray and like stay connected um, and then it's just it means a lot like we all affect each other um, I saw an alternate timeline in my life 
Um, and I like lived an alternate timeline of my life. So I don't know if the timeline stuff is really wild. I didn't know this was a whole subset of spirituality, but during these two years, I opened my computer to write about something not related to this experience, which now I know this is what I'm supposed to talk about and write about. But I opened my computer to start writing like a book and I saw and lived my entire life. If I did that, it was like a movie that I was in and watching. I saw the book getting published to bad reviews. I saw how dejected I would feel. I saw me like basically dying alone and really depressed. <laughs> but it was also like I lived it and I was like, whoa, okay, I'm not going to do that. And I just closed my computer um, and didn't do that and was thankfully saved from like a, a timeline that wasn't very happy. And ever since then, I've also felt like other small timelines. So that's been a little hard to like make choices sometimes to think about like, oh, like I can feel what's going to happen in my life, if how it's going to shift if I do these different things. But if you stay aligned with your heart and love the light and love, like you can go on the best timeline. And there's really, I've, I've heard there's no real wrong timelines. There's just ones that are more aligned with your highest good. Um, mm -hmm. And then the very, oh, I overcame my nightmares. That was a really big part because after my trauma, I'd have these nightmares of demons. I didn't believe in demons, but I, I wasn't raised to believe in them, but I was experiencing these shadowy things at night. Every night, almost every night since my trauma, I would be like awakened and in a paral sleep paralysis and these like shadowy figures would circle me and laugh at me and like try to- Been there and done that. You've oh, done that too? Oh yeah. You've gone through yeah. it. It's, it's horrible. It sucks. It's awful. Did you get rid of them? I did. Okay, good, because it's it's a really, I think a lot of people deal with this. And I mean, even after the therapy, even after the Reiki, even after the yoga, like they were still still happening. They weren't happening as much, the happier I got. But like this last nightmare, I was awakened. And this was for 13 or 14 years. Like this is a really long time I was having these. It was circling me. It was like trying to poke my heart. And I just sat up. I was, out, out, you know, sitting up outside my body in this dream. And I was like, you can't hurt me. God lives in me and works through me. And I just looked at it like I was just, I don't have to be afraid of you anymore. I've been terrified of you guys. And they just stopped. It went away. It never came back. I I was so triumphant. Nice. And yeah, it was a really big deal. Good job. Thanks. Well, Took your power. Yeah, that's what it was. You're right. I, will, I would love to hear about your experience with that, too. It's so intense. But once they're gone, it's like really a beautiful, beautiful thing. And you just have to not be afraid of it. Who knew? <laughs> but um, the very end. So this was getting to the end of my experience. I basically talked. It was a little bit like I was living in heaven on earth. Like, although my vibration was so high, I was surrounded by so much light. I felt these angels and, and it was every step I took felt completely aligned. Um, and then at the end I was in, I was, I dreamt, I basically had a visitation dream with an angel and I was in my room in the dream talking to this beautiful glowing person saying life is hard. I don't know why I'm here and I don't know what I'm doing. And he started looking at me with so much love, like, um, just looking and every time he looked, it was like deeper and deeper to my heart. And I was like fully seen by this person and he was glowing so much with so much love and so much light for me. Um, and he was like, life's amazing. You need to go have a great life and go out and have adventures, go live a great life. Um, it's a beautiful gift to be alive. And he was just saying all these happy, loving things about how life is so great. And I was like, oh my gosh, what's your name? Like literally I was tw I was in my 20s. I thought he was going to be my boyfriend. I didn't know for a long time that he was an angel. And I was like, what's your name? And he was like, Jonathan. And I said, when can I meet you? When you when he said, you can meet me when you're finished swimming. No judgment that I just assumed this. I, and he was so kind. And he then the dream I shifted, I was in a big ship on the ocean and I was lowered from this huge ship by myself and I just had to start swimming out into the ocean alone and the next morning I woke up and all the light pulled back it was just like and it felt like I was just left here because honestly for those two years I thought I was going to learn all this stuff and just go to heaven at the end because I was like this is so awesome as long as I can finish all this cool and get you wish I know I was like and then I'll go to heaven and then it was like just Not came. That easy. I know I know I was really surprised I was really confused because I was like wait what happened to all that light and like why am I here you know no one really knew I'd gone through any of this it was happening internally so I, every few months I'd be like I think I'm done swimming I'm gonna meet this guy now never happened <laughs> eventually i realized like the last few years i was talking with a friend who finally started confiding in a few people 
I was like, I don't think mm-hmm. that's a real person. Anyway, <laughs> so this happened, you know, from 2006 to 2008. And this was a while ago, but I didn't start talking about it till last year because it took me this long to really feel like I could share. So and I got a really big push to start sharing about it last year. So that's my whole story. I don't know if you know how very, very fortunate and lucky you are to experience what you have, because many people have given themselves to God and never experienced anything like what you've talking about. Okay. That's really sweet. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, seeing what you've seen now, I see what I call uh, points of light. Mm-hmm. And they look like little stars. Oh, just, I just saw one when you said that. Yeah, wow, it was in the corner of my eye, though. That's so I cool. I see those all the time, especially when I spend more time with God and I'm not distracted by the right. world or anything. Yeah. yeah, But that's about all I really experience. I don't see any, like, spirits floating around or anything like that, at least not the good ones. The bad <laughs> ones, for oh, sure. They love to come <laughs> around every once in a while, you know? But... um yeah, I mean to to experience what you do and to and to not only that but to have the uh basically the psychic abilities of the Holy Spirit within you is really truly profound. You're Aww. very very lucky. So that means a God lot. must really like you. I think God really likes everyone and I think that's why I'm supposed to tell my story and I I really do feel like it was an accident. I don't want anyone to think I have any answers. I did not mean to be like that's part of why I didn't want to share. I was like I know I'm not a holy person. If you've been my friend, you know like I <laughs> but it really was so it really changed my life and if and I think anyone could do it. I think anyone could do it. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I'm the same way. And since when it comes to psychic abilities, I think anybody can do it if mm-hmm. they choose to believe that they can. Yeah. You know. Honest, um, yeah. I, honestly, I'll tell you the f- a little funny part about my story is I d- wrote that in my journal and then I saw that light and that that first night. And I remember calling my Reiki teacher like three days later, like I saw a light and I don't know why I saw a light. <laughs> Like I was like that dense. She was like, "Why are you? What's going on? What happened?" She knew a lot about this stuff, and I was like, "I don't know." Like I was, I'm just in school, and I don't really know. And then I was like, "I did devote my life to God when I was writing in my journal." And she just like started busting out laughing, like why, you didn't know why you saw light when you devoted your life to God, and and you wrote it in your journal like a written vow. <laughs> anyway, like that's how like not spiritual I was. <laughs> That's how programmed we are to not believe things, you know, yeah, it's just, just like it can be right in our faces. And we're like, what was that? I know. You seriously. Know? And honestly, like since I started telling my story, people have reached out and said, I realized I've had these angel visitations and I totally had forgotten about them. I'd blanked out these beautiful experiences that they've people have had. They for, they almost forget that they've had them. I almost mm-hmm. forgot I had mine. I tried to ignore mine for a long time because it was very confusing to try to integrate it. So. So let me ask you, you saw the light in people in in such a way that everyone appeared or you felt their beauty, you felt their love, their their light from God, I guess. It was so beautiful. That's amazing. You don't see it like that anymore, though? I see it. I see it. Like, honestly, a lot of it have since it ended has been me learning to stay that tuned in with God. Like, and I, it's been a choice for a long time. I was like, I made that up. I'm crazy. I'm ignoring it. Um, but no, I think that light was was that touched me like infused me i don't know and then i saw it in everyone it was it was i do still see it i see the love and the light in everyone but i need to be holding it in myself as well but those first couple days i wish i would have appreciated all i was just like i i could i didn't know if i was going crazy or what you know i I, but it was unbelievable and it, it is just such a you know everyone does have a beautiful light And I did notice that too, after I had that dream with that beautiful angel, I would like go hang out with people. I'd go on dates because I was basically waiting to meet this angel. (laughs) And I'd look in their eyes and everyone would have that light. And I would be so confused, like, wait, everyone has that light inside of them. If I just keep looking, you know, some people have a lot of, you know, trauma and stuff covered, you know, but if you keep looking, it's right in there. And it's, it's really, really beautiful. And I think that's how God and the angels really see us. That's what I was thinking. I was, I, I always wonder, like, if you think about like Jesus, for example, Jesus um, saw people on a soul level. Yeah. So he knew everything about them just by looking at them. That's amazing. And I wonder if that's what he saw too, is he just saw the love and the light in all of them. How could he not love them? 
Yeah, and you then... know, it's harder when we're here and we don't we don't see that stuff. We're totally the veil is way over. I know. You know. And then we'll, all the we see we is listen. the trauma and the pain and the suffering. Oh. You know, and 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 how that reflects inside of us and how we've experienced that. Right. But maybe that's what life is supposed to be. Maybe life is about suffering. Maybe life is about pain. Because if, if we if if we're on the other side and everything is beautiful and lovely, then what would be the purpose of being here? Yeah. I guess to learn from the pain, learn through it. I mean, my my story started because of a trauma. It was horrible. So, uh, but I do. What I heard. That, yeah. What I heard on the other side is they call it joyful pain. No. That's what yeah. spirits say. It doesn't feel that way when you're going through it, but no, of course not. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to ask you also about this um, angel in interpreter. Yeah. So you have the ability to speak directly with someone's guardian angel. That's what I feel. So I, I do. I tune in and I hear what their angels want to tell them, but it's just like the voice that comes into my ear. It's like, and they just show. Oh, they show me pictures. And I, I do believe everyone has this ability. I think because of my experience, basically because of my experience, I really do feel if I don't do readings, I will not be a well person. Like I have to use these, these gifts. I have to use it because I tried not to for a long time and it was really unbalancing for me. Mm. Um, so it is like, uh, it's a, but it's a service and it basically angels, they get really excited when people book a reading and half the time I'm telling them something I'm hearing. I don't know anything about the person. I try not to find anything out unless they have something they want me to know. And they'll be like, oh my gosh, I've been thinking about that. I'm like, yeah, your angels have been telling you things and they, and they were really excited to hear for you to hear this again. You know, it's about something like, you know, taking care of yourself or projects you, you're working on. So I, I am still a human filter. I do have to do work and prayer meditation to stay connected, but they're really right there. And I feel like they're getting stronger a little bit. Like I, I have read that the veil is thinning and more people are going to have experiences like mine. I don't know if that's true, but I kind of think it's true. Do you? I don't know. Absolutely. I yeah. think that we're living in the end times. And I think that just like it says in revelations is that, um, old men will dream dreams and young men will have visions. And that's yeah. happening right now every single day. If you go on YouTube and you look up um, people's uh, rapture dreams, it's like literally every hour on the hour, there's somebody posting a video about dreaming about the rapture. Really? So, really? Uh -huh. You know, at the end of my experience, I don't know if this is a rapture dream. Well, there's two. I had a dream about Jesus since you, um, at, this was just a couple of years ago. And it was a very beautiful dream. And I was walking up to Jesus and he was in a throne and um, very huge, 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 huge. And I was walking up to him like, I should kiss his feet. This is Jesus. And I went to go kiss his feet. But then he grabbed my hand and lifted me up and put me in a throne next to him. He had his hands out and holding hands with people going out forever. And everyone was in their own throne. And it was just his love was going through everyone's hearts for all of infinity. It was really beautiful. That is amazing. That's interesting that you say that because I think it was either the first or second person I ever interviewed on this channel. She saw Jesus. She didn't, she had like an out of body experience. Yeah. And she was in her backyard reading the Bible for three days. And on wow. the third day, she saw Jesus Christ in the sky. Wow. And she said that he was like five football fields huge in the sky yeah massive yeah and i've heard that before with other like near-death experiences where people see him in heaven and he's he's just he's massive huge, but also know? loving no judgment so yes. much love so much love um anyway I, it was very profound and um beautiful i'm very thankful for i told my mom that she's like who has dreams like that but that's before she knew about my experience i was like i don't know mom i just had that dream it was nice um <laughs> i uh i also so at the end of my experience this was actually like, oh, right after it ended i was awakened in the middle of the night by a feeling of i could feel everybody's life on the whole planet and how sacred they were how how sacred everyday life was, how beautiful each human going through their daily routines was almost like I could just feel and feel this, this deep love for them. But then it was also like we were all going off of a cliff 
And it was like everything was going towards a cliff. And then I just said, love is all there is. And it stopped. But I don't know what that cliff is. I don't know what that was about. But that was back in 2008. I don't know if that's a revelation dream. My dreams are very basic about my friends. <laughs> but it was interesting. It not sound that great. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but you know what? The feeling stopped as soon as I said love is all there is. So I've kind of taken it like if we can live in a loving way and be loving towards each other, like we can maybe not go off a cliff. <laughs> maybe we'll be okay. Yeah. Life is so sacred I, and beautiful. So I agree. I really do. I think it would take a collective effort of humanity to really make that kind of shift. Yeah. And it's difficult in these times because of just how much chaos is going on in the world today. There's a lot. There's you know? a lot of chaos. Um, and there's a lot of distractions too, you know, with cell phones and youtube and all these things there's just distraction keeping you your mind busy rather than focusing on god yeah. speaking of meditation yeah um that is the basis of my channel let thy single eye be still and the body shall fill with light it's my favorite verse in the bible that's so beautiful yeah how let's talk about meditation like Tell me about the value of meditation for you. Um, it's where my, I meditate or I, I basically have to, now that I've learned how to integrate my experience or my life is just rough. Um, I, it's, it's how I stay in tune with my higher self and the part of me that's in tune with God. Um, and I actually, it's interesting that that quote, what my meditation is, I fill my body with light. I basically breathe light through my body from heaven and down into the earth and through my whole system. And that's when I, once I would do that, that's where I'm, when I'm able to hear the angels really well. So it's, uh, it's, I, I, I just feel like it, you know, it reminds me that we're in the world, but not of it. Honestly, what about you? Do you meditate every day? Mm, I was just on a uh, uh, work sort of vacation for like three weeks and I didn't meditate at all while I was out there. Yeah. I just started back up again because yeah. usually I do meditate every day. So I can't say I do it every day, but I do enjoy it and I find it highly beneficial. And I definitely, um, I can definitely stay on track more spiritually when I meditate because when I don't, the world is distracting you know, it's so hard. And I felt that happen to me. Once my experience ended, I felt really close to the light. I could feel when I was, but I kept being like, that's not real. That wasn't real. And I would like make worse choices for a couple of years. And I would feel the light kind of leaving me, not leave me, but it was like, oh, wait, I got to do some work here to stay tuned into this because I can really choose. A, we can all, we all have free will. So I, totally. you know, but as soon as you make that choice to get back in with the light or meditate or whatever you need to do to get into it, it's like, okay, cool. We're right. We're, we were just waiting for you to make that choice. So it's pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah. So how do you do your meditations? Um, I mean, some of what I do is just sitting still and breathing, but a lot of it is just breathing light through my system and, um, and like, and light. Uh, more light that's amazing but I also do like writing where I'll tune in and feel messages and stuff I don't know if that's meditation but um what about you do you do like straight up still breathing and thinking of nothing because that's really hard is that what you do yeah I mean I I, I don't do the thinking of nothing thing because I don't try to force that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But um, so I just kind of allow, really, mm -hmm. you know. And the main things that I do is I'll close the blinds and I'll make sure that I'm in as much of a dark space as possible. Mm -hmm. That way I don't have any distractions. And it also has to do with uh, your REM sleep. So when you dream and you go into that REM state, you you have to be in darkness so yeah. that your your brain will activate those dream states. Mm -hmm. And the same thing happens with meditation. So the best way to have a, a experience or to have a vision mm -hmm. is to be in darkness. Uh, the other way to activate the, uh, the dream state is through music. And so mm -hmm. I'll listen to specific types of meditative music to also activate the oh. pineal gland cool. because God resides within the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of heaven 
lies within your pineal. That's so what I've heard, to heard activate that. the pineal, you do those two things. And that can get you the best results in meditation. That's cool. I love that. Yeah. Very cool. Maybe try it sometime. I'll try it. <laughs> Do you have a video about it so I can watch it again? Well, I'll listen to this part of the I interview. Watch this one. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Awesome. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, so you do um your so not only do you do the uh, angel interpretations basically mm -hmm. readings for these mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. um you also are a master reiki healer correct mm -hmm. yeah and okay. so do you practice reiki as well i do i do i call them energy healings they're just healings and i do use the work with the angels but i also have the reiki and uh whatever the spiritual thing happened to me coming through in a healing I really only give the credit to God. My stepdad taught me that it's not, I, if I, if any healing happens, it's not because of me, it's because of the divine, um, the energy flowing through me. So I've had people have really good results from healings I, and I'm always amazed and very excited when they feel better. Um, and I do distance healings and I, I do some in-person healings and I'm very thankful when it helps people. It's a, you know, Life is not easy and healing's really helped me a lot, you know, and I didn't believe in it, but it just, it's very peaceful, very nice. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, it's funny you say what you did when you first, first saw that, uh, first Reiki healer. Yeah. Um, I experienced the same thing, um, with who is now my Reiki master. Cool. Um, and she, uh, her name is Gita cool. and she just had this beautiful energy about her and she was so warm and so loving and you could just feel that that energy flowing through her and when she would direct that energy onto you you could feel it whether you believed it or not right. it was there exactly and it 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 just yeah it changed me i i um so you're making i was never a person that wasn't a believer but I was never really sure, you know, right. um, but she made me a believer very quickly. So I know, I know that feeling that you had, Yeah, you know, it's cool. And that Reiki dream sleep when you're getting a healing and you just slip into that most peaceful place of like, almost feels like your childhood. Oh. It's so nice. Yeah. It's very real. I'm very thankful. That, so are you a Reiki master too? I am a Reiki master now, but I'm not a practicing Reiki master. You don't have to practice. I haven't. I haven't done anything like that in a long time. In fact, I haven't done any readings for people in a long time. I used to do readings. Oh, you did? A lot. What I did. Of, I like, did. Psychic readings or what kind of readings? Soul psychic readings. readings. Yeah. Oh. I, I, um, that's kind of a long story. Yeah. Okay. But I, I'll, I'll just kind of do a brief breakdown for my viewers if they're, they are interested. I got really heavy into past life regressions. Mm -hmm. I was following a woman by the name of Dolores Cannon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know if She's you've ever cool, heard of yeah. her, but she is a world famous uh, therapist. And what she would do was put people into deep theta wave trances mm -hmm. and she would ask them questions about their past lives. Mm -hmm. And I was so fascinated with past lives. I wanted to just learn more about myself. And so I found a practitioner that worked right underneath her and I had a session. And during that session, I basically unlocked a psychic ability that I was not aware of. Wow. And uh, shortly after that, I attended a uh, psychic fair. And I saw a tarot reader, but he was unlike any tarot reader that I'd ever seen pr prior to this, because he didn't read the cards in a way where like the cards have a very specific meaning, mm -hmm. but he didn't read them that way. He mm -hmm. would read them with the energy that came off the card rather than what the book told you that it That's, was. Yeah. They say those are kind of the best readers. They're like actually doing a yeah, so he was a the, true the psychic, card. It's like, right? a, yeah, that's cool. So I said, let me try that. And he, and I did, and I nailed it. And he said, you have the gift. And ever since wow. then, I started doing tarot readings for people, but I didn't like tarot mm. because I felt like it was restricting me. So mm. I stopped doing tarot altogether and I just started basically reading them from whatever I got. That's so cool. And over time, I got better and better at it. And then mm. I started reading for people all over the world. I don't do that anymore. Um, but 
Was it kind of maybe one day I'll go back to it. Were you just feeling like you'd had enough or you felt like your path was a different place? If you feel like sharing, I would say that Christianity makes you feel guilty for these things. Right. And I just really wanted to make sure that if I go back down that route, that if I, if I receive any type of influence that it's from the Holy spirit and not from something else. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, I've never felt like the information I was getting was evil right. or from demonic spirits or anything right. like that. Right. But I think I just want to tread a little bit more lightly with it. And it's not really my focus in my life right now. Mm -hmm. I think generally my focus is just my own personal spiritual growth and not other people's. That's really cool. It's interesting that you say that because I've thought about that a lot. Um, you know, should I do these readings? Because I know everyone has different views. Now, A, there's a cool subgroup of people, spiritual Christians that I've read. I've heard, I think maybe you and I might fall into that group. And sure. like, they're, yeah, I mean, definitely. to me, it really is the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Like, that's what happened to me. But I do, I do have Christians reach out and say, I really want a reading, but I know I'm not supposed to consult with. And I'm like, well, I, I literally, I called my mom, who's very devout. She's a Catholic. I was like, mom, am I not, am I not supposed to do these? I talked to Jesus. I talked, like, as long as it's about helping people be in touch with God and with the love of their hearts, like, it's good. As long as it's not for my own glory. Like, I've felt that because I've actually been thinking about that a lot the last few weeks because I was, wasn't raised Christian. I was raised Jewish. And then I was... Mm. I went to Christianity when I was 25, I was baptized. So, and then I'm experienced at 26. So I don't always share my whole religious background, but I had all of that in my background, but I was, I never was hurt. I never thought anything was wrong. I just thought none of it was real, <laughs> but I was experiencing what I, I knew what I was experiencing, which was those nightmares, which was the angels, mm -hmm. you know? So mm -hmm. it's interesting. And I definitely think there's a, there's an interesting walk and I think it's important to think about all those things and find what feels right for you in your own heart and your own walk and your path. Cause I would stop doing the readings if I thought it was wrong. I keep asking and praying about it and it brings people a lot of hope and joy. So <laughs> I keep doing them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you should, you should, you definitely have, have a gift and I believe that it is divine. The messages yeah. that you're getting and the way in which you're doing it is beautiful. Thank and you. don't don't stop it's definitely a gift from god you're very 100%. sweet thank you well i have you know thank you i appreciate that it's a it's a blessing it's a real blessing but they want everyone to feel them they just want people to know that they're there they they can talk to their angels like they're not alone you know it's just really like it's just to uplift people and hopefully they can go and like feel their own connection to the holy spirit or the angels you know and after so I don't know. It's interesting. Good combo. I like it. <laughs> Stuff I've been thinking about. So, yeah. What's your husband think of all this? Mm, you know, that comes up in like almost every interview. Because <laughs> he's a total atheist. Uh, and I was, is? Yes. You married an atheist? Well, you know, you I must did. Be a great guy. <laughs> I know. Well, it's honestly, it keeps me super humble. Like if I were with someone that was like, whoa, you like, God talked to you. That's so cool. Like it might be, it's also like, you know, we come to a lot of the same conclusions about things just totally differently. He's so intuitive about, about people. And I do wish that he would find like some peace in his heart and I can just, uh, you know, model it. He's a good person. Though. Well, you know what you could tell him? Yeah. You say he's highly intuitive with people. Yeah. I know that's a psychic ability. I right? know. I know. I, I consider it. I know. And he just doesn't believe in that. He's he's totally psychic. But that's okay. It's uh it's funny. I didn't when I met met him, I wasn't sharing I wasn't talking about my experiences. I wasn't even sure they were real and Sure. Um, He's a good person, though. It's funny. <laughs> no, it's okay. Atheists will keep you grounded for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we, we used to debate about it. Um, he does listen to my, my experience, my story a little bit or my beliefs, but now we just kind of, you know, you can have a good life with someone and not agree on everything. So. Oh yeah, of course. I mean, it's marriage. Not going to agree on everything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm like, I'm always tell him after you die, you'll see that I'm right. That's usually how I end any argument. <laughs> This is like not exactly. really nice. But... <laughs> Just remember, That's I told right. you this when you die. <laughs> Sorry. That's what I was going to ask you about, and I completely forgot. Yeah. There was a, a point where you were talking about, um, 
you were feeling, you said something to your sister or a friend or something. My sister. And you yeah. felt what they felt. Oof. And yeah. you felt it so deeply. Yeah. And the only time I have ever heard people experience that is when they go through their um, life reading, when they die. Yeah. And they get that life review and then they experience all the shit that they put out in the world and yeah. they feel it. Yeah. So it's like their own personal hell, basically. Yeah. It is. Uh, you're experiencing that here. Everything so. I experienced was like here, like a near death experience in my regular life. Um, I don't know why That's it was uh, pretty wild, but yeah, I felt it so strongly. And I was like, I literally didn't know that we could affect people that way. I was like, how could I, have I just been walking around here, like hurting people and not even knowing it, but I'm so thankful that I was awakened to that. Cause it let me really change my behavior. It let me really think like even thinking mean thoughts, like, of course we yeah. do it, but I try I not to stuff. do it. Yeah. So, um, I know it's hard. It's hard. And I, I catch myself doing it too. I'm like, you know, and, and then like I hate when I see it online, I see people like just badgering people. I'm like, don't be so mean, you know, I yeah. mean, you just don't really you don't realize it's like what I think about is like that that pebble, that stone that you throw into the water and you look at all the ripples and how it affects everything around it. But you don't see those ripples. You're only there for that one pebble drop. Right. You know, right. That's so true. And that's life. So if you put out basically you have to consciously and subconsciously try to put out as much good positive energy as possible mm -hmm. to you know create that better world that we want you know? i know i know i really uh it really makes a huge difference and nobody's perfect and i think the whole thing in the life review too is that you're completely forgiven like you're sat with and mostly we're forgiving ourselves in the life review and like you're seeing but you just know how much things affect and also they say like the, the random acts of kindness that you do, like if you just spontaneously are kind to someone for no reason, just even and the strangers, like it's, that's some of the stuff that shows up the most in the life review. I think the point is that we can see the light in everyone and help it grow. So. I love that. That's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. Mm -hmm. um, there was something else in your um, about page. You talked mm -hmm. about you're a writer. What do you write? Oh, I just write a sub stack. Okay. I did write writer because I have dreams of writing a book. I do these messages I receive from the angels in the morning. I, I also write a sub stack where I just blab about my spiritual experiences for people who are interested in it. So just different aspects of things, like a lot more detail the, that I share about different times I saw light in people or different dreams I've had, you know, because I think a lot of people are curious about this stuff. I think they you know, people Absolutely. might be awakening. I have people that are really scared and they read all the things I've written and then they reach out to me because they read all the stuff I blabbed online, which is really kind of embarrassing, but I'm only doing this because I felt really called to and I've really let go of a lot of my ego about it. So, but it helps people feel like connected. So that's, that's what I write. I do. What, I would like to write like my whole experience in a book, but it can be really hard to get all that on paper in a cohesive narrative. So so why don't you just record it? Okay. Okay. Thank you, Travis. I will. I'm, I'm going to, I, I, uh, I need to, I've, I've, I spent some time writing it, but I will. It's just easier if you can just record it on a digital recorder and just put it all out there and then you can listen to it. Yeah. Better yet, you can give it to a computer and it'll write it down for you. That's a good idea. And then I get nervous, like, how it. am I going to get published, blah, blah, blah. But I know if I just trust you know, you'd think I'd have all the answers and I would just trust all the time, but it's hard. I'm still a human. <laughs> That's right. You have a kid, right? I have a kid. Yeah. Maya. Is a boy? It's a Maya girl. girl. Yeah. Her birthday's How tomorrow. She's going to be eight. She's awesome. Oh, Speaking of spiritual, God. I had a little Archangel Michael card in my room and she saw Archangel Michael when she came in the room. She's like, I saw that card and then I saw Archangel Michael. It's a big light right there. I was like, wow. <laughs> it was really Whoa. amazing. Yeah. See, and that was the question I was going to lead up to is, does your daughter have the gift too? I think she does. I've been told that she does and I have felt it. She's also just a kid though. She goes to camp. She swims. Like she likes to watch um, TV. <laughs> so I'm just like, I'm trying to nurture that in her because I know a lot of spiritual people were told as children, like, don't ever do that. Stop kind of stuff but she she has met her guardian angel we did a little um meditation to meet her guardian angel and he told her how to get rid of her nightmares 
uh wow it was such a cool thing i mean it was so powerful because she just right there was right there he said he had a robe of light and he said you just throw them through this cloud into the underworld and they'll go away and that, she's done that ever since i mean really beautiful i would very much like to meet my guardian <laughs> angel we'll have to have this conversation another time yeah but, uh, you should yeah email me we can set something up or i mean you have you know, you have Jesus for sure if you're a Christian, but also we have our personal angels that are with us during our lives and they'll, they protect you and help you and, um, yeah, keep you safe. Yeah. I would certainly like some sort of guidance, um, and maybe learn more about my guardian angel. Cause I know I have one, maybe two, three, who knows how many there are, but you can have a lot. I do believe in that for sure. That's really cool. Definitely. So before we go, okay, yeah, that was cool. I think that was um, good. I didn't know you were. I didn't know if you were Christian or spiritual, but it sounds like you're both. That's really cool. Uh, yeah, I I was when I moved here to the mountain home a couple of years ago. I I had joined a Christian church and mm -hmm. I got baptized and I was back into the Christianity thing. And I I grew up Christian as a kid, but I fell away for many many years. And then I got into the ghost hunting and the mm -hmm. tarot and all that stuff. And yeah, and um. You know, while there's, you know, I, I learned a lot about the spiritual world and I learned so much uh, uh, about uh, Reiki and, and yeah. love and light and all that stuff. Yeah. I was um, I was still surrounded by darkness. Mm. And so I that that took a while to sort of get rid of the darkness, you know, and I um, I just had to step away from everything you know, yeah. and just really just focus in on myself. And um, when I moved here, I was very lonely. I didn't have any friends. And I was just like, well, a good way to make some good friends would probably be go to church. Yeah. So I gave myself to God in that way. And I became Christian. But fundamentally, after about a year and a half, I just fell away from Christianity, because there's just too many things I think that the dogma of Christianity, I don't agree with. I know, you gotta um, find that middle road. You know, yeah. yeah, you know, and so I just can't really call myself a Christian. Like I believe in Jesus Christ and I believe in God. And there are a lot of things that I do believe in, yeah. but there are a lot of things that I don't agree with. And uh, so I just don't even want to call myself a Christian anymore. I don't really know what to, I just call myself spiritual now. You know? I think spiritual Christian is cool. And I, I, I don't know. I mean, because that is like. I, I, yeah, there's a lot of fear in Christianity. The only churches I ever went to were like the nicest, most liberal churches. I go to Episcopal church now, but I'll also go to synagogue because I have both in my background. But yeah, I can understand. It's like, Jesus is amazing and there's so much truth, but then it's like, what that judgment is such a, it's like a cage on your heart. And honestly, like when I talk to Jesus, he's like, these people are suffering, but those are the only yeah. people who ever lash out on me at line online. I have the nicest comments from everyone and every once in a while this is the devil. I'm like, guys, you're like, if God talked to you, you would not even yeah. know it. Like, you see and I have such a hard time with that. There, there are some very prominent people, especially even on YouTube that mm -hmm. will say things that we consider from, you know, God are demonic and it's just nonsense. Having experienced it's like that. They'd never even experienced a demon in their lives. Yeah, and, and they just say and everything is demon. It's ridiculous. It makes me sad. I'm really trying not to attract that in my life, but it's something I've been dealing with since I started sharing my story, but I have to know my own truth. I have to know my own truth. Mm -hmm. I had the dreams about demons. I made them go away with God. Like I would never do anything to bring demons back into my life. Like I would never do that. So I think we can make our cool spirit. Like half of my followers are like spiritual Christians. They like love stones and crystals. They love Reiki and they love Jesus. And it's like all cool. That's my favorite kind of person. <laughs> so I think it's a good vibe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, crystals, we have them in our cell phones. They're all hypocrites. Yeah. You know, it's like, Crystals have a great deal of power in them, especially quartz crystals and amethyst and things like that. I feel you that. Absolutely I feel use them for your abilities. You know. I think you have an important path, Travis, because I think there's a lot of people that would like to keep the good parts of Christianity, but also have spirituality. And like your channel is doing that. You're very openly speaking about it. It's super brave. And I'm trying to be very brave because there's no help. There's no help for people in that kind of judgment. That's not going to help them feel God. You know, it's just to keep them afraid. It's sad. Yeah, it's true. And I mean, it even it even kind of keep, kept me away because, again, I haven't done any psychic readings in a very long time. Um, but, uh, 
there's there's two things fundamentally that I'm have a hard time with. I have a lot of people in the Christian community that are very against meditation. And mm -hmm. I have a very hard time with that because Jesus very specifically talks about meditation and the importance of it uh, in the Bible. Right. But for whatever reason, I think the thing that's uh, unfortunate with the Bible is that everybody it's, it's open to interpretation by every single person that reads it. Right. And so the, the Bible may mean one thing to me, but it may mean something to somebody else because it's all taught in allegory. Right. right. And people read. And then you also parts. have. Yeah. What's that? Sorry. They like to read different parts. Like the people that say I, I shouldn't do readings. I'm like, what about the gifts of the Holy Spirit? Do you just skip over that part? Like, honestly, but most of them haven't heard the story. And you're afraid. Mm -hmm. Most, it's only a couple. Most people think my story is great, but it's only the people that are mean or the Christian, the really fundamentalist one. So it's a bummer. So here's the thing that the next time a conversation comes up where somebody says that they feel guilty about uh, communicating with someone like you mm -hmm. um, because of their Christianity, mm -hmm. just say, listen, the Bible sp very much is, is against divination, but you don't do divination because divination is the action of doing something to get something and re result. But you don't do that because right. all you do is connect with angels. You yeah. connect with God, with angels. You're not taking bones and throwing them on the floor. Yeah. You're not using tarot cards. You're not using any tools of the devil. Right. You're simply connecting with God. So yeah. that should be your argument. I should, so. should you have that I mean, if I thought- So you're not I doing divination. Okay, that's good to know. And that's what I tell people. I'm like, look, it's up to you. I want you to do what you're comfortable with. But if you want to go to a reader, I'd go to a reader like me who had an experience of God. <laughs> and I promise. And if you know, and I'm like, we can call in Jesus at the beginning of the reading. And then it's always fine. I mean, I don't know. I yeah, don't know. I'm sorry perfect. that they're so afraid. But I know my father's house has many mansions. I know I'm not supposed to judge anyone. I try not to. But anyway, everybody's spiritual journey is very different. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah, I love your journey. I think your channel is super cool. I love your like, I love that you're kind of finding the balance between the Christianity and the spiritualism, because that's what I've been doing for a really long time. So I think it's cool. Yeah, it's beautiful. I mean, um, it's so interesting, because like I said, I was Christian before, mm -hmm. but I had when I was growing up, I just went to church because it was fun. Yeah. My friends were there. I, yeah. I didn't have a, a, a close relationship with God or Jesus Christ. Um, I did have an experience that I'll never forget. You know, I felt that lifting up experience when I allowed Jesus Christ into my heart. Oh, that's I, really I cool. I felt that. I mean, that's I amazing. felt the weight of the world lifting off my shoulders, and it was amazing. That never that's happened so again. Wow. Yeah, but I'll never forget that. But I, I didn't know anything. I, I thought the stories were silly. I, I never yeah. took them seriously, and I never really fully understood them. But now that I'm older and I'm reading more about the mysticism of the the uh, stories rather than the literal sense of them, because the stories, they have fundamentally uh, like a, a there's a literal uh, moral value in there, mm -hmm. but there's also a mystical value attached to them. And that's the part I'm most interested that's in, really because cool. Jesus yeah. said to uh, his disciples, he said that I teach you. Um, not an allegory. I teach them an allegory so that they have the, so that if they have the eyes to see and ears to hear that they'll get the message. But mm -hmm. I teach you differently behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. I want to know what he taught them behind closed doors. That's what I'm interested in. Have you read all the other gospels people talk about? Okay. A, I will say after my experience, Jesus is what he said made so much sense to me in a way that had never made sense before. I was like, click, 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 everything makes sense. And I think that was from my experience. Um, but you know, there's like a course in miracles. There's like the gospel of Thomas. There's all these different gospels that people talk about. I haven't read have or the Gnostic gospels, the Dead Sea Scrolls. I don't know. Yeah. The Gnostic ones is actually the one I'm most interested in. The oh, Dead cool. Sea Scrolls. I, I did a lot of research about the Essenes. Do you know? Oh, who yeah. the Essenes are? That's what Mary was. Right. That's the ones yeah. that wrote the Dead Sea Scrolls. That's so cool. Right. I have the way of mastery. Oh, cool! And this is uh, this was someone who channeled Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ basically taught people some beautiful things. And then I also have the other one that you were just talking about. Oh, I didn't realize we were still recording. I thought we were done, so I was going to ask you a thousand questions. But if this, yeah, why not? If you want this to be part of your conversation, I love that book. Yeah, it's so beautiful. 
I've heard I the angels singing when I've opened yeah. it. That's like one of the times I've heard angels singing is when I opened that book. It's really, really, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's. Open that one up. I mean, I, if that's when I was like, whoa, and then I closed it. They'd stop when I opened. It. It's just very high vibration. I think it's really beautiful, and some people truly believe that. Um, yeah. What's yeah? I'm really good at buying books, reading. Mm, you know, not so much. <laughs> I love to read the books to read here. Yeah. Well, I think you're on a great journey, and I think you know the best thing is to really meditate and talk to Jesus. You'll feel him, and he'll give you guidance. I don't know if you've done that, but it makes a difference. I haven't talked with him. I I talk, I, I pray all the time. I'm like I'm ready for you to tap me on the shoulder and tell me I that I am the way, the truth, and life. But I haven't heard that yet. Well, you have to just like Wait. clear, clear, clear. Call it to Jesus. Wait, be in the light, and then see what he. I just feel like he'll be there. But that's probably just because of what happened to me. But I don't. I don't. <laughs> Maybe I need to get a journal and say I give my life to God. I know. And see I'm like, everyone's like, that hasn't happened to me. I was like, well, did you get bat misfit and baptized and then devote your life to God, like in your journal? <laughs> try all those things. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you get your, get your journal and try it. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. No one's, no one has said they haven't, they've ever tried that. I don't know. I don't know. I think honestly, I think everyone's supposed to have the spiritual experiences they have for a reason like mine was supposed to happen for me the way it did yours are supposed to happen for you the way they do and god will reach your heart in the way it it's really most meaningful for you and you'll know like like you felt when you were you let jesus in your life and you felt uplifted like that's really powerful and that can sustain you for a long time and i think you'll just know you'll have the right things for you I don't know if you have to write exactly what I wrote. You can try. But you have to be I'm crying. Try. You better cry. <laughs> <laughs> I probably will. I'm such a big teddy bear. Yeah. I'll probably cry. It's, mm. it's, I'm curious. Well, okay, stay in touch. It's been so fun to talk to you. And um, I hope we keep the conversation going. I'm really excited about what you're doing. Well, I wanted to ask you before we go, um, how can people get a hold of you? You can find me on my website. It's RebeccaCastle.com. Um, my last name is spelled a little funny, K-A-S-T-L. And um, that's me. You can find me there. I'm also on Instagram. I'm on... I just started a YouTube channel. I have one video on it, but I'm trying to, you know, be better. So I have that. I don't know. You can, I would love to be in touch. If y'all have any questions or anything, please reach out. I'm here. I'm very... What's your YouTube about? Well, I was going to just start sharing kind of what I, what we just talked about. I shared my STE story in a video and then I'm just probably going to talk more about different parts of it. You know, how I decided it was real. That's something I talk about because I wasn't raised to think anything that happened to me was real. You know, experiences I've had with angels, stuff like that is in the plans. <laughs> I haven't really done it yet. So, but yeah, it's a big deal, deal to have a YouTube channel. It's, it's a lot of work, but you're doing awesome. It is a lot of work. I know all about that. <laughs> quite a few YouTube channels that I that I run that it, it it's quite uh, time consuming, but um, equally very rewarding. Mm -hmm. You know, it's worth putting in the time. You know. Yeah. Well, thank you, Travis. It is. It's really cool. I'm going to work on mine. If I need, you can ask me about your guardian angel. I'll ask you about YouTube. How's that? Trade? Okay, that <laughs> sounds like a fair trade to me. Okay, thanks. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me, and I look forward to uh, chatting with you some more. Thank you, Travis. Love to talk to you today. Right. It's really special. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Bye. Bye.